Um, I will talk about the effect of dynamic synapses on, uh, on neural networks and uh, uh, I should have one disclaimer is that I'm a theorist so I, I take experimental data as and I you know get a phenomenological model and take it from there and see what he in this talk what the consequences of that model are on the network level and there may be many out of here out there here in the audience that know much more about all the details of the synaptic level uh, which is uh, not really my my expertise so what I will tell you is a brief um, uh, recap of the uh, of what I understand of dynamic synapses and um, the, 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 the the overall story is is what the effect of, dyna of dynamic synapses is to, in particular dynamic uh, uh, um, synaptic depression is on computation in recurrent neural networks and, and so that's uh, what I will uh, will talk about so to re uh, to recap the uh, dynamic synapses model this is an old uh, uh, picture from uh, which is this one? Yeah. Okay. So this is a this is a this is a, a pyramidal cell, and uh, if you do pair if you do pair if you stimulate uh, presynaptically with this pulse, uh, then postsynaptically you get in different trials you get this kind of uh, EPSPs. And now if you do a, a paired pulse stimulation, some sort of a, of, a, of a you mimic a learning process. Then, uh, then, if you then repeat this, uh, this after this pairing, you will see that, in particular, the, the first response uh, is is uh, sort of uh, 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 repeatedly, uh, significantly enhanced, and the rest is sort of murky. And that that first response is shown here. So here, before uh, the pairing, you have this response. Then you do the pairing, and then after the pairing, you get uh, this this uh, higher higher response. So the um, this is affecting. Uh, basically, the uh, so the uh, so you see that before pairing, the average response that you get of the synapse is, is about this, and after pairing, you get this big peak, and then it, it, it goes down, and it is shown here sort of statistically uh, that before pairing, uh, you get uh, that that as a after pairing, as a function of the response number, so as this time, you see that this uh, this this effect, which is called this dep synaptic depression, uh, and the um, uh, the synaptic depression is uh, depends on, uh, on on the frequency. So here you see uh, left, you see before pairing, and here you see after pairing. So before pairing, you see uh, there's this spike or this spike, and then uh, does something like this, and then and then after the pairing, you see that the first spike gets sort of uh, gets gets uh, enhanced, and that is sort of independent of the frequency. But the asymptotic response that you get, so the detail of this, depends very much on the on the frequency. Of the, so if the if this if this frequency is high, then you get then this goes down to a low value asymptotically. If the frequency of stimulation is low, then this goes down to a higher value. And so that is what's shown here as a stum as a function of the frequency, the uh, asymptotic value that you get uh, decreases uh, with with frequency. So that's a very brief recap of uh, dynamic uh, of synaptic depression and and uh, the the, the Macron and Sodix uh, model of it is uh, is involves the three very variables per synapse x y and z which add up to one uh, which are fractions of uh, of, of uh, neurotransmitters that are recovered effective and inactive and so how should you see that so if, if nothing has happened in the past then you may consider that all the uh, uh, all the neurotransmitter is uh, is, uh, uh, is is recovered, and then uh, if a spike uh, comes, it will give rise to uh, to a effective neurotransmitter, which which will yield a postsynaptic uh, uh, effect in the postsynaptic uh, neuron. So this is the total current is proportional to y. Then uh, this uh, leaks out by uh, by a time constant, which is basically the time constant of the of the EPSP itself. So it, it goes down in a few milliseconds, maybe. So that's this time constant then it becomes ineffective and it recovers with this time constant tau rec uh, which can be several hundreds of, uh, of milliseconds so this is the basic model of synaptic depression uh, in which this u is the uh, is the uh, 
is, is the sort of a, a rate and uh, this one can, can augment this model by facilitation by having an, another dynamical equation for u uh, which then uh, is then if spikes uh, happen, presynaptic spikes are happening short, briefly after each other this u is increased uh, to a sort of an asymptotic value and if the presynaptic activity is released it, it, it falls back to its, to its baseline the value with the time constant tau uh, fac uh, from facilitation which we also see here in this talk okay so how to um, how to model this now you can make this, this equation a bit simpler by basically ignoring this fast time constant uh, uh, this one and basically saying okay well this is just a few milliseconds so let's just ignore this and the main thing is this this big time constant it is important so then you collapse these two variables basically and you only and since these sum up to one basically you have only one variable left in which we call x and so you can make a model that uh, says okay we have a, uh, a, a dynamic synapse which is a variable between 0 and 1 uh, which gets depressed whenever an incoming spike is coming in <laughs> with a certain rate uh, and then it, if nothing happens it recovers to its, to its full value 1 uh, with a time constant tau rec and so here you see a simulation of that from incoming spikes which are the, the green uh, spikes and here you have the, uh, the, the activity starts for the synapse as 1 and it de decreases and it as not thought to this was the behavior of this, this very simple model so we want to study what the effect of this is in attractor neural networks. And just let me just remind you with a few slides what an attractor neural network is. A Hopfield network is from the 80s. It is a bunch of, of neurons which can be either stochastic or sort of continuous graded response neurons or you can put uh, more, uh, more realistic neurons in there. But always you get the same kind of behavior which is these attractor neural networks which is, which is able to do associative uh, memory formation. What does it mean? It means that, uh, that you can store a number of patterns in such a network which are here the black nodes so you can think of such a network embedded in a larger structure which may be some some sensory data or, or something like that so you have a network and then you uh, you you uh, encode in the connection strengths between the neurons certain numbers in such a way that the dynamics of the network is such that it can hold certain patterns as stable memories here we have a, a, a picture of that here we have three patterns a spider two bottles of beer and a dog and uh, this is this is a, this you can see is a neural network where there is a two-dimensional array of neurons where uh, the, the the gray code is the activity of the of the neurons uh, at, at, in that in that network and so if you want to simultaneously store these three patterns you can adjust the the, the connection in, the, in this that, that such a way that if you now initiate something that looks a little bit like one of the stimuli the dynamics will actually take it to there and if so if you present a, a noisy spider you will get a, a, a cleaned up spider if you present one beer bottle you get two beer bottles and if you spend one ear of the dog you will recover the, the whole dog and so as a picture a mental picture you get sort of a, a landscape in, in phase space where the activity is, 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 is attracting to certain fixed points and these fixed points are these, these, these uh, pictures now this is a very nice idea as a memory for, for the brain but of course one of the problems with it is is that once you're in a fixed point there's no mechanism to get out of the fixed point right so you're stuck there and so what do you do you need some, something else and so what we will see is actually the dynamic synapses will have a profound effect on this kind of behavior because you can imagine that that here in such a fixed point this this one of these black neurons is firing all the time and that firing will do something with the synaptic strength of that connection and actually so these attractors will become better stable and they start to move over time Okay, so these are the, uh, the sort of the formula. So here you can model this with binary neurons where the neurons are very zero and one. And you have a stochastic uh, dynamics where the probability that some neuron i at the time t plus dt has the value one. So it's spiking given that at time t the activity of the whole network is given by a vector uh, s, uh, is given by the sigmoid of uh, some number beta times a local field where the local field is basically the summed input of all the other neurons with these connection strengths and then compared with a, with a threshold so uh, and, uh, and so you can store these patterns by using something called the covariance rule where these patterns are these uh, binary bit patterns like the dog and the spider etc uh, this xi where mu labels the pattern and i and j labels the neuron label and so if you have this learning rule you can get these, uh, these weights and they will uh, actually do uh, what, uh, what I just showed you uh, in, in simulation now an important number is this alpha which is the number of patterns uh, 
uh, over the number of neurons, uh, and we will see that the, that the memory is, uh, is uh, depends uh, critically on on, uh, on, the, on to function on that on alpha not being too big. But first of all, let's look at this other parameter, which is beta. So beta is the strength of the of the coupling, and uh, if beta goes to infinity. Uh, the sigmoid basically becomes like a, like a step function and you get basically noiseless dynamics and this probability will be always saturated to zero or one. And if beta is small, uh, say, say if beta is zero, you get a sigmoid of zero which is a half and the probability is just firing randomly at a half. So, oh, so the beta is a, is a, is a coupling strength and, um, and so if you, you can think of this system as sort of as a spin system, sorry, uh, as a spin system and um, the, uh, if there's the uncoupled you get like a bunch of uncoupled spins and each, each spin is doing its own thing. But if the coupling gets stronger uh, they start to listen to each other and they like and if the coupling is positive they like to do the same thing so you get something like this. So uh, depending on beta you can see this as a very simple memory. This is a memory everything black or everything white. Right? And you can make other versions of it where, it's, where you actually get with, with the same ease by changing the couplings you get here actually a spider pattern or two beer bottles. So it depends on, on the strength beta to go from here where you have no memory to here you, where you have memory. And, and that, uh, there, is a, there is a phase transition between these two states which is basically given uh, by, by looking at the fixed point of, uh, of, the, of the dynamics and it, it has to do with the slope of the sigmoid compared to the straight line and if, if this, this, this straight line crosses the sigmoid three times then you get these, these memory patterns and that the, happens when the sigmoid is sufficiently steep or when beta is sufficiently large. If beta is very low then this only crosses at one point at the middle and you have no memory and you get this left hand side. So what you get is that the, that the memory, so the over, so, the, the, so here you see the overlap of a stored pattern with the, uh, with, with the actual pattern here. That total uh, ma magnetization, say, is, is large for, for very uh, large beta and it is, it, then it goes to zero uh, at, at, at this point. So there's this phase transition uh, happening here as a function of beta. The other thing, the other phase transition that occurs here is a function of this alpha, which is the number of patterns. And so uh, the, the fact is that if you store many patterns in this network, uh, where many you measure comparative to the uh, size of the network, then the network breaks down because, uh, because of sort of negative interference between the patterns. And that's given, so the total picture is given in this slide, in view of time, let me hurry up. So the, the T is, is one over beta, so large T is small coupling. So if the coupling is too small, we're up here and we get in this no memory state. So there there's no memory that we saw before. If we now go increase the beta, so we go for smaller T, then here in this gray area we have memories and we've been exploring this line in the previous slide. But if you now look at alpha, then because of this interference effect, you get actually also, if alpha gets too big, the thing also breaks down. So in other words, in this lower triangle, you get memory storage, everywhere else you don't get memory storage. And now the question is what happens if we if we now add the dynamic synapses, the dynamic aspect to the to the synapses, what happens uh, to this? Okay, so the, the, the full model is actually very simple because we have the same dynamical system but just uh, the way that the dynamic synapses act into the local field is just multiplying the, uh, the synapse, right, what it's doing. So this, uh, we just get, uh, uh, so uh, and it is good to keep in mind that it's not an, an xij, so we don't have a number per synapse, but we actually have a number per presynaptic neuron because the presynaptic neuron has a certain, uh, is in a certain way uh, activate all the outgoing synapses in the same way. So we get this, uh, this, sign, this, this number here, which is between 0 and 1, and it has a dynamics, which is given by this simplified uh, Solix macron uh, model with a tau rack in it. And now the question is, what is this model gonna, how is this model going to behave? So if you, if you, uh, wh what you observe is, is the following result, is that you get, so if you store uh, one pattern in the network, this is a network of 100 neurons, and uh, we have uh, stored a pattern which is 50% white and 50% black. And I should tell you that if you store the pattern with white and black, then the anti-pattern, which is the reverse, is also a stable attractor in that network in the simplest setting. Um, so what you will see is that uh, instead of it being that pattern a stable attractor, it becomes, uh, uh, it starts to oscillate between its pattern and its anti-pattern. So first we have the pattern, Right, so here are the neurons, so the, 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 some are in the state minus one and some are in the state one or zero, one, whatever you want to call it. And then after some time it suddenly switches 
to white and black and then it goes back etc. If you uh, change the parameters a bit you get the same uh, oscillations but it happens uh, at a faster uh, time scale. So what, what, what if you, this is the activity um, of, the, of the network of the neurons, so it is the, the neurons themselves, here you see the activity of X. So there are uh, uh, X's that are in the pattern, that are acting in the activity pattern, so in the so 50 of the 100 neurons are uh, encoding for the pattern, for the ones in the pattern, and 50 of these neurons are encoding for the zero in the pattern, and we distinguish between the synaptic variables X that are in the pattern active and in the pattern not active, and they play a complementary role. You see, so you see that if you are in the pattern, uh, then uh, those, uh, those uh, synapses are depressed, those outgoing synapses are depressed. And the other synapses that were not in the pattern, they are not, these neurons are not active, so these synapses start to recover with this time scale. If they recover so, uh, enough, then suddenly uh, uh, this, the anti-pattern becomes active, and you get that the, the network switches to this value, and then the, synaps the synapses that are outgoing from the neurons that were active in the pattern, they, uh, they start to grow etc. So you get this switching behavior. So this is just with one pattern. If you now have 10 patterns here where, the, where you have 100 neurons and the first pattern is the first 10 neurons on and the remaining 90 off, the second pattern is the second 10 neurons on and the remaining off, etc. You get this very complex uh, picture of, uh, of this switching uh, in this dynamic. So we would like to understand how this, uh, how this works and what is, how does it depend on. For that we, we introduce a number of uh, variables, we look at the mean activity of the, of the neurons uh, that are active in the pattern, so we, we're looking for the activity around one pattern, so we store many patterns, but we look for the activity around one pattern. And uh, so we have these variables, uh, so the activity in the pattern, the activity out of the pattern, and for x we do the same, so we get four variables, and basically we get uh, four coupled equations, which are our mean field equations, and we can analyze those equations analytically and see what happens. Uh, so here you see so these, 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 uh, these variables, so here's another simulation of the same, here you see these variables m and x, so m is encoding for the first pattern, so, so whenever uh, whenever uh, whenever there's a peak uh, here, it corresponds to the first pattern, a peak or block there, so those, those are these axes, these m's, and the axes are the recovery variables corresponding to those ten, 10 neurons. You see them recovering, so it's happening. Okay, so if, um, so you can do, if you have time, I have no time to go uh, into this detail, but you can do a sort of a stability analysis of this system and um, and uh, look at that and you will find that the, the previous phases that we had, the memory phase where the pattern is stable and the uh, other phase where there is no memory where actually the pattern of all, you know, the random activity uh, the, the firing rate at 50% is stable that these two, uh, these two regimes get now separated and there's going to be a regime in between where none of these behaviors are stable, and that is shown in this picture here. So uh, here uh, the memory is stable as a function of the recovery time. So here uh, the, the non-memory is stable, and in between neither of them is stable, and you will get these oscillations. So in, in pictures you get finally the, the, the take-home message, basically this picture here. So on, if the tau recovery time is, is zero, we get basically the static synaptic case, this classic Hopfield network, and we've seen that if beta is small we get no memory, and if beta is large we get memory. So that's the horizontal line around, around zero. Then in the new effect is as a function of the recovery time, and we see that for a certain area we get this new switching behavior that we can characterize completely. So this is in the case of, uh, of only uh, um, depressing synapses. If you now add facilitation, then, the, then maybe this picture is the, is the best. You can see that the facilitation is here and the, rec the recovery time uh, is, is here. So this is the time constant of the facilitation and you see basically that it doesn't do much because these lines are basically horizontal. It does something and there's a whole complex story there, but for this I will uh, ignore it. So to understand this picture, you can look at, uh, so the memory phase, uh, so in this picture for instance you see we're, we're varying tau, uh, tau rec as for a given value of tau fac, which is here 10, so we take here 10 and we move this way and we see that these stable patterns, these memories, they get unstable at around 
at this point and then they are oscillating and here is the no memory state so this line is actually is a hopification and this is a, this is a very complex uh, uh, first order uh, tr phase transition so what happens to the storage capacity as a, as a last point? Um, so you may, you may, okay, so first you may say, okay, we have this switching behavior, so what is it good for? So, it, 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 so we have a memory which is stable for some time, and actually it turns out that the time that it's stable, maybe I should point it out, that the time that the memory is stable is inversely proportional to the recovery time constant. So I haven't, don't have that figure here, but if you, so you get, if you come from here, you go down at a certain beta, you get uh, here no memory, then you start getting oscillations, and these oscillations are getting longer and longer and longer and longer until they get a stable fixed point. So if the recovery time gets slower, the, 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 the plateaus get, get larger. So you have a whole range of, of areas where you have these dynamic memories, and you can imagine that such a system, not acting in isolation as here, but in, in, a, in a real world where there are sensory stimuli coming out, that there's an interesting way for this to switch tension from one, uh, from one scene uh, to the next. By the way, this picture is showing that uh, this is a simulation of, uh, of uh, integrated fire neurons, where we, where, we, where we show basically that the same kind of neural, this kind of analysis that we did for the binary network is reproduced in more realistic uh, integrated fire uh, uh, neurons. But so, okay, so we have this, this system with the dynamic synapses and what does it affect, uh, what is the effect on the uh, uh, storage capacity? Well, the, the bad news is, is that it's basically reducing the storage capacity. Now from the 80s we know already that the storage capacity in the Hopfield network is low. It is, uh, you can, it's a very complex uh, statistical physics calculation and it is, uh, this one can compute this number uh, that the, the number of patterns that you can store relative to n is so, in a network of 100 neurons you can store 14 patterns, that's not particularly much. Um, and this number is actually going down uh, if you have a de depressing synapses. So the, if the recovery time is zero you get, uh, you get this, this value and that value goes down if you with with uh, with depressing synapses the storage capacity goes down but if you include facilitation actually then in the presence of facilitation and depression you can get this number back up again so there is a way to to compensate for that and there's quite a complex analysis of the three variables the recovery time the facilitation time and the uh, uh, and the number of, uh, of neurotransmitter density that you have and so um, Basically, it is either stays the same or it goes down the, the storage capacity. Um, so, in conclusion, um, the main findings that I want to report is that uh, is that the synaptic depression and facilitation uh, uh, implemented in a recurrent neural network is a very w uh, easy way, attractive way to make uh, something we may call dynamic uh, memories. Uh, uh, these oscillations between different memories uh, could produce very interesting uh, behavior if these, uh, these are coupled to sensory data. Uh, the, the switching is very rapid. Uh, I, should, I should emphasize that. So you may think of, um, of having a multimodality and being in this well and then going to the next well, which is typically takes a very, very long time. This phase transition is such that this, this switching is extremely rapid, as you saw in the simulation, it's almost in one step, it's very, uh, it's because of a very, very strange kind of uh, instability in this network. So this allows for input sensitivity, let me not dwell on that point, I, I already said that. Storage capacity uh, goes down. Uh, maybe some dis as a last point, some discussion of some related work. Um, this this work that we did uh, was started in 2002, uh, and we have been working it uh, mainly. My my co-worker uh, uh, Joaquin Torres at the University of Granada has been doing a lot of this work uh, over the last 10 years. Um, difference with other uh, modeling work is that. Uh, uh, they uh, often assume uh, continuous deterministic neural dynamics, also tell the binary stochastic dynamics, and this is uh, and in that if you do that, then you don't observe the rapid switching that uh, that we observe. So I think that is that is quite an essential point of of our work. Um, uh, oh yeah, the second point. So this this variable x is one per neuron, and there's an old model by uh, Horn and Usher uh, that talked about dynamic thresholds. And in fact, uh, mathematically, uh, that's indistinguishable. So you could actually uh, use this model, also make this interpretation as x as a, as a threshold value, and get exactly the same, uh, well, exactly the same, get, get similar kind of uh, similar results. Um, 
So the switching could be related to cortical uh, up and down states that have been reported. Uh, however, similar cortical oscillations can also be generated uh, by hyperpolarizing potassium con uh, currents and the possible both mechanisms are relevant. Uh, the storage capacity has also been studied by B uh, Bicot, B B Bichkov, uh, for very sparse uh, stored uh, patterns. So here the, the pattern that I stored have 50% activity, so 50% on, 50% off. Of more realistic, of course, you have very sparse port patterns, but you get basically the same findings. And last but not least, uh, the storage capacity goes down, uh, but independently of it, you can talk about the basis of attractions, and our numerical simulations actually show that the uh, basis of attractions actually increase with both synaptic depression and facilitation. And here is uh, the original paper by, from 2002 and a recent review paper that uh, Joaquin Torres and I wrote in uh, front use of uh, computational neuroscience. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Bert, um, for this nice talk. Uh, are there questions? Yes? Uh, one small one. So what's the meaning of this beta parameter? So in the real life, so, so you are defining that, and depending on the strength of that value, the synapses is doing something or, or writing on the other one. Yeah, so of course, in these models, you, you never know, so these are phenomenological models, so you never know exactly what the strength is, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, so it's basically the strength of the synapse, right? Um, and um, in, in this binary model, it, it also, it's not only the strength of the synapse, but it also models the amount of, of stochasticity uh, in the transmission between synapses. So uh, you should think of it as how reliable the transmission of one neuron to the next one is. Okay. And in those terms, the other parameter, the PK time, the fuzzy K time, is not in certain kind of thermal noise in your model? Which fuzzy K time? Uh, in the sodic model, in the macram sodic model. So you were talking about two decay times? Yeah. One large and one small? Yeah, so this, this small one is so this is basically used to shape the, the alpha function for the, uh, uh, for the PSP. Yeah. And uh, so we, we, we in, in this binary model, we ignore that. We just say there's a spike. Yeah, exactly. But the, is, is that not in certain kind of noise? So if, if you actually... Look yeah, but, but it is, it's on... It's, I think you can, so you can safely ignore that, I think, in this model. Because here, these, 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 these oscillations, they occur on the, on the time scales of tens to hundreds of uh, milliseconds, whereas this, 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 this tau in is typically of the order of three milliseconds or something like that. So it's very fast. Yeah. I was wondering what is actually the reason that the storm patterns remain so stable irrespective of the switching and uh, the continuous changing of the synaptic strengths in the network. I would expect that any say uh, <coughs> randomization of, uh, of noise would uh, destabilize the stability of the individual patterns. Uh, so you mean, but you would expect that even in the absence of dynamic synapses? Well, in the absence of, of no, no, in the presence of uh, dynamic synapses, uh, say any, any random term would change some strengths in the pattern and would uh, blur the stability of the pattern themselves. So, if you if you look at uh, at this uh, this simulation, for instance. Yeah. So it's very noisy, but um, so there is 10 patterns stored, uh, and so uh, what happens is that at, so, at some time, th maybe, so what you actually see, what I didn't say, that so th the patterns that are stored are the first 10 neurons on and 90 off, etc., right, so all these blocks. What you see actually that the activity is a mixture of uh, these things, and this is because these patterns are not orthogonal and you get all these mixture kind of behavior which also affect the storage capacity. So there's a lot of things going on here, but anyway, so you are in this mixture state at a certain time, and then all the synapses that are uh, co correspond to those neurons that are active, they get all depleted. As a result, that pa those patterns, these three patterns say, they get these three local minima, they start to evaporate. But there's many others. Yeah. And because of stochasticity, then you jump to any other. And the choice where you jump to is quite random in this state, where you jump to. But there's all these other attractors there, which are all uh, happy and alive because their synapses are not depressed. 
So you will jump to those um, indiscriminately to any one of those. And so then as one you get attracted to those, it depends on the realization of the noise that you have at that point. And so that, that's what happens. And then as soon as you jump to this other uh, mixture of patterns or uh, pure state, uh, then the previous synapses get, 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 uh, they get, uh, they get, uh, they get back, and they, so then these valleys, they re-establish themselves. So it's, you could think of it as an energy landscape where the, where the bumps are actually, uh, they're moving. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you.